of induced EMF and current. We'll be using Faraday's law and Lenz's law and Ohm's law along the way. But we have a rail system, two metal rails uh, separated by 7.5 centimeters. We have a metal rod that is sliding to the left here. At the present time, the uh, speed of the rod is 38.7 centimeters per second. We have an external magnetic field, 0 0.07 teslas, coming straight up uh, through the paper, perpendicular to the area of the loop that's formed by the rod, the rails, and this resistor, 7 ohm resistor on the end. So we want to know what is the value of the induced EMF at this time. Uh, we calculate EMF with Faraday's law. N is the number of turns of wire in the circuit, and that's only one for this problem. And then we need to somehow come up with the change, rate of change, of the magnetic flux. How much does the magnetic flux change in a given period of time? Uh, well, let's first take a look at the flux. The magnetic flux is magnetic field times area times the cosine of the angle in between the area and the magnetic field. This uh, uh, theta is measured from the area vector that is perpendicular to the plane of the area. So in fact, the area vector and the magnetic field vector have the same direction. The circle with the dot is the magnetic field vector, to the tip of the arrow. So the magnetic field pointed up, uh, coming uh, towards the camera. And that means that theta is going to be 0 degrees. The um, magnetic field vector and the area vector in the same direction. So the cosine theta will be a 1. To find delta magnetic flux, that's going to be magnetic field. And the thing that's changing here is the area, delta area. And I'm just using a 1 for the cosine of theta. Magnetic field is constant. It's uniform all the way through here. But the area is changing. As the rod goes to the left, the area is decreasing. The area of the loop is decreasing. And we can calculate area, of course, with length times width. Length times width. And delta area would be how the length is changing, a delta x, let's call it, uh, times the width. So this could be rewritten as b. I'll use w for the width the 7.5 centimeters, and then delta x for how much the rod advances to the left. That's going to be the decrease in the area, the delta area. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, put in values here, minus, and temporarily I'll keep this minus sign and the 1. And now the delta magnetic flux. So our magnetic field, 0 0.07 teslas. The uh, area comes in here with the width first, 0 0.075 meters. And then how will I represent, I'm now coming to the place of uh, delta x over delta t. Delta x over delta t. So I'm just going to let you think about that. How could we get a number for delta x over delta t that would complete this uh, delta expression in Faraday's law? Distance over time. Well, let's say the delta t was one second. That's a little bit too long here, but uh, let's say it was one second. What would the delta x be? Well, we know that the rod is moving at 38.7 centimeters every one second. So it would be moving 0.387 meters in one second. So I'm going to continue this now. And I'm going to, to drop the minus sign and the 1. We'll handle the minus sign later with Lenz's Law. Uh, so the EMF, the magnitude of the EMF, is going to be 0 0.07, the 0 0.075 for the width. And then I bring in the speed. So 0 0.387 meters per second, just to show you the units I didn't show you before. But we've uh, 
formulated Faraday's law now for the case of n of 1. Um, we've deduced what the delta magnetic flux over delta t would be, this expression, and we can multiply those out, those three uh, numbers, and we can come up with the EMF, the magnitude of the EMF being 2.03 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. EMF, an old term from the 1800s, electromotive force. It does not have units of newtons, it has units of volts, but it's uh, somewhat the uh, persuasion on movement of the electrons around the circuit. It's in volts, potential difference. So there's our EMF. Okay, let's go down to uh, our next question. What's the current in the 7 ohm resistor? Well, we have the voltage in the circuit. There's no battery here, but this uh, changing magnetic flux does cause an EMF and causes a current to exist in this circuit. And we can simply use Ohm's law, V equal to IR. We have the voltage, 2.03 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. We have 7 ohms in this circuit. If we assume that the rails and the rod and the junctions here have no resistance, you know, an ideal physics problem, all the resistance in the 7 ohm resistor. So that's the resistor of our resistance of our circuit. And when we divide volts by ohms, we'll get amps. So doing that, we get 2.9 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. That's the current in the uh, 7 ohm resistor. If you don't like powers of 10, we can change this to 0.29 times 10 to the minus 3. 0.29 times 10 to the minus 3. 0 0.29 milliamps. That would be the current in the 7 ohm resistor. Now the question, what's the direction of the current in the 7 ohm resistor? Well, to answer this question, we'll use Lenz's law that the current that's induced will in some way oppose the change of the magnetic flux. So what's happening to the magnetic flux here? The magnetic flux is B times A, the cosine factor is a 1, the cosine theta is a 1. The magnetic field is constant. It's the area that's getting smaller. So the magnetic flux is decreasing. The induced current has to somehow oppose the uh, decreasing magnetic flux. And the way that this can be accomplished is the induced current, use I for current, creates magnetic field. So the induced current creates its own magnetic field. What do you re direction do you think this magnetic field should have compared to the direction of the original magnetic field. Let's come back to our drawing here. The original magnetic field is coming up through the area towards the camera. The area is decreasing, so the flux is in decreasing. How is it that we could keep the magnetic flux, try to keep it, it won't succeed, but how could we try to keep the magnetic flux value constant? If the area is decreasing, the cosine theta is always a 1. Smaller a, we need a larger B. We need a help for the magnetic field through this area. So I'm going to draw it another circle here, another dot, a couple of them maybe. So the induced current needs to, I'll put little tick marks by these, these are the new magnetic field symbols. Uh, due to the current that's passing in the rod, the rails, and through the 7 ohm resistor. So I need a current that's uh, coming up through the paper. Well, you use your right hand and you just guess. And it's a little easier on the, the video here. If I put my right thumb in the direction of the rod, if I guess that the current is going up the paper 
on the uh, in the rod. I wrap my fingers around the rod and come back up through the area, and my fingers are pointed up. I've guessed correctly, and ask your instructor if you need some help with this. Or on the uh, rail up here, the current, the traditional current would be going this way. So I, I put my thumb in the direction of that upper rail. I wrap my fingers around and they come back up through the plane of this area. The current is running uh, counterclockwise in this circuit. And that will create the necessary uh, uh, additional help for the magnetic field. So I would kind of complete this and I is down on the page on my drawing through the resistor. So there we have it. Faraday's law. This minus sign here is really a reminder to use Lenz's law that the induced EMF, the induced current, have to oppose the change that's taking place. We only had one turn of wire in this coil. The theta was zero degrees, so the cosine theta was a one. The area was decreasing to create the uh, change in magnetic flux. And we found that change in area by the delta x. How far did the bar, the rod, move to the left? We needed delta x over delta t distance over time, that's provided to us by this speed, 0.387 meters per second. So EMF from a changing magnetic flux, current in the circuit through the resistor, and then Lenz's law helps us determine the direction of that induced current. Lenz's law is very general. It applies to many different situations. Um, there'll be different ways of analyzing what is the change that the current has to oppose. So um, it won't always be handled in the way that's shown here. For this, uh, this problem, it works. In other situations, the, uh, the wording could be slightly different for how Lenz's Law is, ap is applied. The important thing is the induced current will oppose the change that's taking place. So in new situations, you have to figure out what's causing the change in magnetic flux. That will lead you to a decision on how the uh, direction of the current is uh, in future situations. Keep practicing.